Hello, everybody. This is Bob Taranjo, and uh, so glad to be back in the reading room. Uh, it has been quite a while since we have been here, um, and uh, I apologize for that, but uh, I have had to take care of things that, uh, well, everything doesn't revolve around just speaking in a microphone. There's a lot of other things to take care of. And especially over the uh, holiday seasons, family and uh, things like that that we want to be a part of. But I trust you had a good holiday season and a Merry Christmas and looking forward to a Happy New Year. Amen. And uh, this is our time for us to enjoy those things. Uh, I need to check and make sure that um, we aren't doing a silent movie here and that you're actually getting sound and picture uh, on uh, Facebook. Uh, thank God for this uh, uh, opportunity to be able to come to you by, by way of uh, uh, the electronic uh, communications of Facebook and YouTube, and also for um, being able to uh, have us be gathered together in um, the uh, DVDs that we send out. And so excuse me while I just make sure. Okay. How about that? That's pretty good. So that's a good thing. Uh, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Bobby Jean's still up in Michigan. I'm going up to get her uh, very shortly. Uh, after this weekend, in fact, uh, if not sooner. Uh, we'll see how things uh, uh, go this week, but uh, miss her very much, and uh, but we'll be back in the saddle again, get her back home, uh, and uh, hopefully in time for uh, the Sunday after this one coming up, and, uh, and looking forward to getting back in a groove and getting be able to uh, present to you the word and the worship every Sunday, and it's, so, uh, it's such a privilege for us to be able to present to you uh, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask God to bless us tonight and help us. Amen. Father, we do need your help tonight. We need our, our, our uh, inspiration to come from you. We need you, Lord, to enlighten us Open up our thinking, Lord. Open up our heart to receive your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to be gathered tonight in your name and your nature. We thank you, Lord, that tonight you're meeting every need. We thank you, Lord, for the new year that we have begun. And we ask you to bless it and go before us. And uh, let all things be prepared for the day of the Lord that's at hand. Lord, I'm asking you tonight that you'll anoint your servant and that, Lord, the words that I speak and the words that I read will be words of life and glory unto your people, that, Lord, they will grow and mature and be changed by the word of the Lord and by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. In your holy name we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We're in Hebrews, uh, the eighth chapter. Uh, in fact, I think uh, this is uh, uh, just in the eighth chapter. I think this is our third session. And I told you at the very beginning, uh, we're going to have to go slowly in the Greek. The Greek has so much to give to us. It has so much to reveal to us about the original uh, uh, writing of the scripture under the unction of the Holy Spirit of God. And the word that we mostly have been dealing with are uh, those translations of men from the original Greek. So uh, this is our uh, blessing tonight is that we can read right from the Greek, thanks to Jonathan Mitchell and the New Testament, uh, that he has uh, uh, been uh, given a, an anointing 
to render from the Greek for you and I to be blessed of the Lord. So uh, thank God for that, that we have this. Uh, but we're not going to get in a rush with it. We're going to uh, mine it. We're going to dig down into it. Uh, we're gold seekers. We want the pure gold of the Lord. Uh, we want the unblemished truth. So uh, getting into the original Greek is one of those ways that we can do it and uh, let it speak to us. And I do want to emphasize that, that we have been saying all along, and that is, is that in this ministry, in the reading room, we're allowing the Word to minister to us. The Word itself, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, uh, it is laying out for us a lineage of truth. And if we were to go all the way back to Genesis and read the scriptures all the way through to Revelation, uh, we would have a line of truth that comes from before the beginning of the, of the ages back into God himself. And that line of truth has been coming down toward us through all of the prior ages, and now we are receiving that original truth. Hallelujah. And it's so wonderful to know that. So uh, we can make up our own messages. We can make up our own uh, ideas about what we think we should know concerning God. But uh, none of it compares to the fact when we let the word minister to us. And the word tells us what God wants us to know, not what we think we should know. So this is about priesthood, and this is about Melchizedek. It's about a, an, an endless priesthood, and it's about a high priest, Jesus Christ. So uh, as my custom is to do, in King James, I'm going to read King James verse, and then I'll read that same verse out of the Greek rendering. But let's go back a little bit to the first verse, Hebrews 8, and read out of the King James to bring us up to where we were ended up at uh, last time. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man, and that is you. That's your body, your soul, your spirit. That's this being that you are that God pitched this tabernacle created and made in his image and his likeness. Amen. Third verse says, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man, this high priest that we have, Jesus have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Well, we know that according to the natural lineage of Jesus uh, from Mary, his mother, that uh, he was of the uh, tribe of Judah. So that's a tribe of praise. But there's nothing written in the law about anyone from the tribe of Judah becoming a high priest. That was uh, the tribe of Levi that had that designation by God. So as always, God moves uh, to the side and draws us off of the beaten path of our own ideas and our own concepts and he draws us aside like Moses got drawn aside by the burning bush. Uh, he uh, had to be drawn aside to a spectacle in order for the Lord to speak to him out of that bush. And uh, this is the same way. Uh, God has set in certain things through the law and through the, the pattern of the tabernacle and the priesthood. But God always knew that there was a high priest that uh, no one knew about, 
uh, no one was going to be able to say, oh, I know, but there's another high priest. Uh, he knew that uh, he had spoken uh, in a few places about this high priest, but those that read it had no understanding because they had no idea who it was. Uh, and it turns out that, uh, that God had uh, designated that to be his own son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're, we're thankful for that. But these are all comparisons that, that the writer of Hebrews is making between the, the uh, natural uh, uh, tabernacle and the natural priesthood that was according to uh, the lineage of the flesh. And it's all being compared to the spiritual tabernacle, which is you and I and all, all, all mankind, and uh, the uh, spiritual uh, ministry of priest king. So uh, this is all comparing it, and it's an awesome writing that is revealing to the Hebrews, the believers that were uh, first fruits unto God, actually, out of the early church, uh, a people who dwelt in the land uh, around the area of Judea. And uh, he is writing this letter to these called out ones. And uh, he is letting them understand his knowledge of how these all were uh, types and shadows of greater things, which we'll get into here in just a second. So it says, in the fourth verse, for if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve these, these priests serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. They're mere shadows and uh, examples or types of things which are greater than they, than they are. So everything that God did in the Old Testament, everything that God did through uh, the uh, patriarchs and through the, uh, uh, the, the children of Israel and, and, and through Moses and Abraham and through the priesthood and through the kings and the judges and the prophets, and all of that went on through the Old Covenant, that was all type and shadow of something that was going to come that was greater than that. And that's why uh, the writer of Hebrews starts off in the first verse in that saying that in those old times, we heard from prophets and we heard from uh, those who had a word in old times. In old times, you see, they heard from Urim and Thummim. In old times, uh, they, they heard from seers. But in these days, he says, we hear from the Son of God himself. Amen. That's how far off we have wandered. That's how far off our uh, walk in God is right now, is that we still wait for a man to prophesy over us, uh, for a teacher to teach us his viewpoint on God and, uh, and reading out of a uh, translation of the original Greek of the New Testament. That's how far off we have been. Now God is starting to draw us back into that one-on-one -on -one communication, glory to God, with the living word who is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word, hallelujah. So that's, that's what's happening right now is that we are being brought into that original communication with God uh, beyond the, the ministry of types and shadows. So you can stay in the types and shadows and just uh, keep fooling around with a shadow that has no real reality in it, in itself, or you can go to that which is being pointed out to by the shadow and saying, I'm the lesser, but here is the greater. Amen. And so that's what this eighth chapter is doing. Uh, the writer is revealing that to us. 
So Hebrews 8, 5, who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. I'm going to read that fifth verse in the Greek because uh, the last session, this verse was so full of truth, and I'm not going to spend all that time on it like I did the last session. We need to move on, but I just want to read it to you so you can refresh yourself of how powerful the Greek is when it is describing what the writer wants us to know. It says, who are constantly rendering service, talking about the priesthood according to the law, who are constantly rendering service for an example, an underlying copy, the effect of something shown from under, and by a shadow of the folks upon the heavens. Notice what it says, a shadow of the folks upon the heavens or the atmospheres. Amen. So this is pointing toward not only uh, places, heavenly places. This is pointing toward, uh, as we read here in the next rendering, of the super heavenly ones. The super heavenly ones. <laughs> Doesn't that just make you curious as all get out to think what are these super heavenly ones? So we need to go to uh, Hebrews 12, you know, to find that out. And I ministered on that Sunday. And that is, is that we have come unto Mount Zion, uh, unto an innumerable company of angels, under the uh, uh, church of the firstborn, the, the assembly of the uh, firstborn, unto just men made perfect, unto Jesus, the mediator of a better covenant, unto spirits of just men made perfect. Uh, these are our, our folks and things, super heavenly ones, the things pertaining to completely heavenly places and things. These are things that that aren't entwining themselves in our natural understanding or our natural walk. Uh, these are things that are being held above us, out of reach to us, because we have to be processed by God in order to have fellowship with that realm. So there's still things in us that would use those things for, uh, for our own benefit. And so God is busy uh, purifying us and purifying our hearts, purifying our minds, purifying our motives, so that as we are added unto and as these super heavenly ones and these places and heavenly things that are completely heavenly, uh, as they start to be revealed to us and walking in them, then we will be in a, a state and condition in Christ where we will be able to walk in the breath effect of those things and that there will be a gush effect from those things into our life. Amen. Using the Greek terminology there. Uh, and, and so now... Uh, in uh, the next part of this fifth verse, it says, just as Moses had been managed or instructed, being about to finish or complete or perfect the tabernacle, for he continues to bring to light by declaration, continue to observe. That's our word, isn't it? Isn't that what you feel God's telling us today? Continue to observe. Continue to to be totally aware, 
continue to have all of your faculties come alive in the day of the Lord. That is of necessity, folks. That is probably one of the most important things that we need to understand today. Our faculties in Christ, our spiritual faculties and senses have to be sharpened in order to be able to see into these things so that we can walk into them and make them manifested in this existence that we're in now. Hallelujah. That takes faculties, that takes senses that are, are, are hyper aware of the surroundings around us. Uh, it's one thing to say, oh, well, you know, the scripture says that I, I'm in heaven now. I don't, I'm not going to heaven. I'm in heaven now. That's so easy to say. Uh, but if you're in heaven, then be aware of heaven. Uh, don't, don't let that just be like we do so many times, uh, just a slogan. Uh, let that be a reality. Uh, if, if, uh, we are walking in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, then we should be able to start to understand heavenly things and, uh, not as they are given out in the natural existence, but as they come from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says to him, continue to observe so as to see that you make or construct all things down from and in accord with the pattern. I hope you're under, uh, 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 you're with me on the language here. That's why you can't rush it. Continue to observe so as to see that you make or construct in all things that you're going to build all things down from and in accord with the pattern. Where are these, uh, uh, these super heavenly things at? They were in God in the very beginning, before the foundation of the world. It was all in God, and it's still in God in his pneuma, in his presence, in his abode, his spiritual atmosphere that he abides in. And the natural man cannot look into that and know it. It has to come from the Spirit of God. It has to come from an agreement in us with the Spirit of God so that we might see these things and observe them and see the pattern, see the pattern. So many people, when they start getting revelation, they, they want everybody to know, hey, I received something new. And uh, y'all don't know it yet. I'm the only one that knows it. But this is something real new. Uh, in fact, uh, they say all the time, in fact, I want to tell you right now, you're going to come into a new ministry. You're going to come into a new anointing. You're going to come into a new day. You're going to come into a new way of praise and of worship. You're going to come into a new way of uh, living uh, in Christ. And all of this, new, 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 and they're not connecting the pattern because it will be new. But what the word means by new is that it not, doesn't mean that it's never existed before. It means that it's going to be known in a new and a living way. But you, you really need to check yourself if you're thinking about going over sideways somewhere and doing something new. Because what we're having to do as sons of God, as administrators of the day of the Lord, we are having to make sure, like Moses had to be, that we are in the path, in the lineage of truth in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we are walking not just in revelation of something new, but we are actually revealing what is already here and seeing that God has been bringing us down a path of lineage so that what he did yesterday is what has led us into today and what he's doing in us 
today is what's going to be with us as we go into the tomorrow. What he did in this age has ministered to us in this age, and what he's doing in this age is going to continue to minister to us in the next age. But that's the challenge of our human nature of trying to one-up everybody else. I have a, a word that nobody's heard. I have a ministry that nobody knows about. And, and I tell you, if we will stay humble, if we will stay small, if we will stay in accord with Christ, if we will continue to allow God to do through us those things that he has purposed to be done in its time and its place and its order, if we will stay balanced in the Lord so that we're not walking in a revelation like a drunk man, drunk on your own revelation, where you are staggering here and then staggering there and then running into this uh, wall and then falling down these stairs, if we will stay sober in the day of the Lord, if we will contain ourselves in Christ and not flail against the wind, but if we was, Paul said, keep ourselves under control and be able to walk each day out consistently and constantly, then we will come into further truth as God reveals it. Amen. And it will line up with the pattern. Hallelujah. Glory to God of the original glory that's in Christ Jesus. I don't want to waste time with a shadow. I want the real thing. And I'm not talking about uh, Coca-Cola either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, okay, see that you make the pattern according to that was shown to you on the mountain. And I brought all that out about the DNA, brought all that out about Jacob's ladder, brought that about the virgin birth. All of that is to show us as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. The natural has a lineage. The spirit has a lineage. DNA is nothing else besides a, a uh, genetic uh, uh, sum total of what has gone before you. Uh, cells come from other cells. So uh, if you see a cell, you know that it hasn't popped up by itself. A cell comes from another cell, which comes from another cell, and there is that sameness, that lineage, that identity that is in the genetic material of those cells. Well, you have a genetic identity in Christ. It's more than you just saying, I'm a son of God. The fact is, you have the genetic makeup, spiritually talking, the genetic makeup of your heavenly spiritual father. Glory to God. And nobody can take that away from you. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's yours and it's a part of you. And once you start knowing about it, you won't keep trying to prove to others that you're a son of God or prove to yourself that you're a son of God. It will simply be. You are what you are. It is what it is. I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. So, uh, so, so you're not caught up into this uh, trying to prove yourself all the time. Hallelujah. So now uh, entering into the new verses that we haven't read yet, Hebrews 8, 6, King James, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Uh, the word mediator, that's the same word that was in, uh, that I ministered on Sunday uh, in the 12th chapter of Hebrews. And, it, uh, and we're going to read what the word mediator means in the Greek. Sixth verse says, but now he has hit the mark 
uh, in, in the uh, King James, that's what it's saying when it says, but now hath he obtained. The Greek says, but now he has hit the mark. Glory to God. Amen. And that's how we obtain. That's a sign of our having obtained the things that God wants for us is that we have hit the mark. You can't get it any other way. You're not going to get it if you miss the mark. If you're high or if you're low or if you're on either side, if you hit the mark, that's a sign that you have obtained something. Glory to God. So that's what the Greek says about Jesus. But now he has hit the mark of a thoroughly carried through public service. And that's talking about an excellent ministry. Even by as much as he continues being a medium, an agency, an intervening substance, a middle state. This is what the, uh, the King James uh, translators chose the word mediator as someone that mediates. And here we're getting an expanded version of what that actually means, an agency. And I told you about an advocate. Jesus is our advocate. I told you that Sunday morning. An intervening substance, a middle state, one in a middle position, a go-between, an umpire, a mediator. Uh, I've ministered about in, in the reading room about the neck ministry, that the neck is a mediator. It is a bridge. It is a go-between in a middle position between the head and the body. Everything between the head and the body has to go through the mediator, the go-between. Hallelujah. The one in the middle position. In... Uh, uh, Daniel, the 12th chapter, the Lord gave me a song about a middle position, a ministry who is in the middle of the river that Daniel saw in a vision. Uh, a, a man clothed in linen or righteousness, a ministry uh, of high rank. And uh, he is in the middle of the river. He is between both banks. He is, he is that go-between, that advocate that ministers between both banks. He ministers to both banks at the same time. His word ministers to the, those things which are in the earth, and he ministers unto those things, those super heavenly things in the heavens. And he is that which God is going to use to bring both realms together in the middle of the river. Hallelujah. There is, a, there, there is a joining unto the Lord of being caught into Christ where we are meeting him in the breath effect of God. And it's, and, and it's a middle place. Uh, uh, Jesus, when he hung on the cross, was in a middle place, wasn't he? He was suspended between earth and heaven. And he became an advocate on the cross for the earth, that, that, that in him giving his life, that, that, that those which were in earth will then have a fellowship and a, 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 a way made for them to come unto God. So he was, again, a middle position. If, if, if all you think that you are is just this super holy one that's way out there by yourself, doing something out there all by yourself because you just want to do something new, well, then you got to reposition yourself. We are in the middle of everything. We're not set aside. We're in the middle of everything. You're in the world, but not of the world, but you're in the world. Your, uh, Father, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, 
but that you might keep them from the evil of the world, right? But we're in the world because we are a bridge. We are an umpire. We are a ministry that is going to be able to minister to people in every state, every condition, every order, every place in the Lord, no matter what their past has been, no matter where they've come from, we have the word to minister to them. The word that the Father is giving to us is the word that the world needs. Amen. And that's why we need to stay uh, in touch with the order, the divine order that, that has come down to us. Amen. It's not your order. It's not my order. It's the divine order from God. How beautiful is that? Amen. So uh, it, 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 it is talking about this. Uh, he has become a medium of a superior, stronger and better arrangement or covenant, settlement or disposition, which has been instituted now, that word uh, instituted uh, is the word established in the King James Version, but in the Greek, which has been instituted, set by custom, legally established upon superior, stronger, and better promises. My, my, my. What a... Uh, uh, a difference, and uh, in God, that's always, that, that's a God thing, where everything becomes better, uh, not as good as better, uh, not the portion that you have, Elijah, but a double portion, more than, and uh, and that's what God's way is. He always brings us into the more than, amen. We don't want to just be a, a really great Pentecost uh, feast. We're, we, we have a, a greater feast uh, because it's uh, established upon greater promises. Uh, it, it is the culminating feast. It is the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Entwinement, the Feast of Booze. It is that which all things are heading into, Amen. How blessed are we, praise the Lord. Hebrews 8, 7 in the King James, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Amen. Uh, if that first covenant had been enough, then there would be no New Testament. There would be no uh, Jesus, no reason for Jesus. Uh, it would have stayed in a uh, Mosaic covenant. It would have stayed in the uh, Aaronic Levitical priesthood. But instead, uh, we find in the eighth verse, it says, for finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of of Judah. The new covenant versus the old covenant is that uh, Jesus himself said that I have not come to destroy the law. I have come to fulfill it, to swallow it up into something greater. In God, there is no waste. In God, there's nothing that is thrown out. Uh, you know, our, our, our grandmothers and grandfathers, uh, our prior generations, uh, they would probably faint if they saw how much stuff we throw out <laughs> in this generation. The amount of food in the restaurants, the amount of food that we throw down our own garbage disposal in, into our trash, uh, the stuff that we get tired of, and we just throw it out. Uh, in in the old days, there was ingrained within them because they, they, it, it was a harder life through the depression, 
and through the times of uh, lean times, uh, everything uh, was used um, and uh, everything was, ma uh, uh, was made useful and they found a way to do it. Kids made toys out of things that weren't shiny and lights popping on and off and these weird sounds coming out. Uh, they uh, took a stick and a tire and, uh, and rolled the tire down the road. Um, they made uh, uh, stick dolls out of sticks out of the forest and they, and, and they made their own little families out of these little sticks. Um, the things are that uh, today it's a sensory overload and, and there's so many things we have to go back into in Christ so that we, we start, uh, 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 we're, we're, we get back to the place where we silence all of the noise and all of the uh, uh, disturbance and we start listening to God again. We start hearing his voice again. We start knowing him instead of knowing him through a church or through a preacher. We start knowing him. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not easy, folks, uh, but it's what we have to do. We have to do that. Amen. Uh, so finding fault with them, he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Seventh and eighth verse in the Greek says, for if that first one, the first covenant, was being unblameable without ground for fault finding, beyond criticism, satisfying, a place of a second one would not have continued to be sought or looked for. For continuously blaming, finding fault, and being dissatisfied with them, he is saying, consider, days are progressively coming, says the Lord. Listen, consider, days are progressively coming, says the Lord, and I shall progressively bring an end together a conclusion of its destiny or a joint goal upon the house of Israel and upon the house of Judah with a new arrangement, a covenant, a disposition. Arrangement. Arrangement in God has a lot to do with our state and condition. Uh, we are being rearranged as I speak. Uh, everything is in us that's going to get in us. We don't need to ask or look for something else to put in us. Uh, everything's here. God has put it all in you. And uh, But it's not arranged right. Things are ruling that shouldn't be ruling in us. Those things that should be ruling are below, under, those lesser things. So God is rearranging us. He is, he is uh, rearranging our status and our, our, our state and our condition. And Christ is taking his place in us. Our spiritual inner man is taking his place in us. Our carnal lower man is giving way to him. And when that arrangement is done, there will be a new agreement upon our being. The, it, death will be no more. Oh, hallelujah. There will be no more night. Just read uh, the book of Revelation uh, of the new Jerusalem. There will be no crying. There will be no tears uh, of sadness, only tears of joy. And uh, the night will pass. There will be no sea. There will be no tumult and no uh, distress. But everything will be in its right place and we will be walking in this life as a whole man. Completely whole. Every part complementing the other part. 
Oh, hallelujah. And you know, it's going to start first of all in you, right? Then it's going to work its way out to the church, to those that are believers. And then it's going to work its way out to those who are lost. And then it's going to work its way beyond just mankind. And it's going to work its way into all creation. This wholeness, this completeness in Christ. Don't you just love it so much? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So consider, days are progressively coming, says the Lord, and I shall progressively bring an end together upon the house of Israel, upon the house of Judah, with a new arrangement, a new covenant, a new disposition. So the ninth verse of King James says, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because... They continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. This is very unusual to hear God explain himself to mere mortals. But this is his people, and he's wanting them to know that uh, this is not going to be according to the covenant that I made with your fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Why, Lord? Because they continued not in my covenant. And because of that, you see, I regarded them not, saith the Lord. So the ninth verse in the Greek reads this way. Not down from nor in accord, this new covenant, it's not down from nor in accord with the arrangement which I made with their fathers in a day of my taking hold upon their land, upon their hand. What a personal uh, statement about God. Uh, the scripture says he led them, but the Greek here says that he personally took hold upon their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Isn't that just beautiful? Can you see the the difference there of a relationship where he is a father and he's taken them by their hand just like you would for your little kid to walk him across the street. Hallelujah. Where you, you, you admonish them, don't let go of my hand. And uh, uh, Dio Moody uh, once talked about uh, a father who uh, had a stubborn child, a son, and... Uh, they were about to walk across a, 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 a snowy, icy street. And the, the father took hold of the boy's hand to uh, take him across. And the son jerked his hand out and said, no, I don't want you holding my hand. I want to hold your hand. So the father relented and let him hold on to his hand. And sure enough, they got halfway through and the boy uh, feet went out from underneath them and because he let go of his father's hand he landed and, and hurt himself and so the father picked him up brushed him off he said now let me hold you and I will not let you go I will keep you safe and, and that's the way God is wanting us to let's put our hand in his hand amen let him take our hand Lead us, Father, lead us. We're not obstinate, Lord. We're not thinking too highly of ourselves. Lead us, Almighty God. Take our hand each step of the way and lead us and hold on to us, Lord, and keep us safe in this day. Oh my, hallelujah. What a beautiful uh, statement in the Greek In a day of my taking hold upon their hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not remain or abide or dwell in my arrangement, my covenant. And for my part, I cared not for them, says the Lord. I, did, I was unconcerned about and neglected them. Uh, that's a scary thing. 
uh, uh, believe me when I say it's a fearful thing to be in the hands of an angry God. It's a fearful thing. And so uh, if anyone's thinking that God won't uh, let go of you, if you refuse to let him lead you in your hand, you keep pulling your hand away from him, he's not going to fight you every step of the way. He's going to let go. Forever? No. Until you learned your lesson. Until you've learned what it is to walk hand in hand with the Lord. Amen. There's always a lesson in it. Uh, Hebrews uh, 8.10 in the King James says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. It's one of my favorite verses. And write them in their hearts. And they will be to me, I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. You can raise your hand. Amen. You can start praising the Lord if you want to. Amen. Marvelous, marvelous truth. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now, it's important for you to understand, it's not just talking about you. It's talking about your enemies. It's talking about those who despitefully use you. It's talking about those who take the name of the Lord in vain. It's talking about all these bad characters. Amen. This is a, a covenant made to all creation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In that he saith in the 13th verse, a new covenant, when he says a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which de is decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Hallelujah. Can't wait to see how the Greek says all of this. Uh, in the 10th verse, because this is the arrangement, the covenant, the disposition, which I shall continue arranging for the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, progressively giving my laws, my laws into their thought, into that which goes through their mind, into their perception and comprehension. And I shall progressively, uh, I wonder how many times I didn't count, but he's using the word progressively an awful lot, isn't he? So let's pay attention to that. Let's understand the importance of that. That is not just going to be a jump from here to there. It's not going to be a, a, an instant lightning bolt change. Progressively, 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 little at a time, uh, just, just on schedule, a progressive change, a progressive unfolding, a progressive revealing. Uh, learn to rule your impatient soul. Learn to rule it and make it patient, amen, in the day of the Lord. Don't get ahead of God. Don't do things just because you think it'd be a good thing to do. Let's get back to where we start hearing from God before we do anything, amen? Uh, uh, let's stop trying to make things happen because the end of that is not good. The end of that is being out of the order of the Lord. And then you're subject to anything happening. Uh, but if we will learn to wait upon the Lord, I can't stress that enough for all of us. Wait upon the Lord. If it doesn't happen now, it'll happen later. Between now and later, be like Enoch and continue to pray to please God 
until your translation comes. Amen. But instead, we put our hand to it. We try to make it happen. We force it. It's like taking a round pe a peg and a, a, a square hole and trying to put it into it. And then we go get the uh, hammer and we start beating on it with a hammer because we want that peg to go into that square hole. <laughs> and so we're going to make it happen. And the result is the peg breaks. The square hole is ruined. And now we're without a peg or a square hole. So learn of the Lord, progressively giving my laws into their thought. And I shall progressively, a very important words here, imprint them, write or inscribe marks upon their hearts. I will imprint, I will engrave uh, my laws into their thought and into their hearts. And I shall continue being in and among them. Praise God. I love that. I shall continue being in and among them. Be among us, Lord. Be in us and then be among us. Amen. The Christ in you and the Christ in me. The deep calls to the deep. Amen. And we are among each other in the spirit of the Lord. When we are in the spirit, we are gathered together into Christ. When we're in the spirit of the Lord, we are uh, giving of ourselves to one another. We're each other's strength. We're each other's joy. We're each other's peace. Amen. That comes from being together in him because he says he will continue being in and among them, in relation to them, into the position of a God. And they shall continue being, exist being in me, in relation to me, into the position of a people. Hallelujah. If James said it so well, how can you say you love God who you don't see and you hate your brother who you do see? You can't do it. You're lying. You're just plain, bald-faced lying. If you say you love God and then you, you have all these enemies that you hate, you have all these people that you blame, you have all of these people that you think are against you. You have all of these people that are out of your own actions many times, your own actions, you have set them at an opposite course from you and, 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 you, and, and you hold them in a low esteem and then you say, oh, how I love Jesus. No, you can't do it. You have to love God and you have to love others as yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Have to. Can't get around it. Have to. But this is what this new covenant does for us. It gives us that kind of an arrangement. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit so strong in these words. And they may by no means teach each one his fellow citizen and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Another reason, so you must be intimate with Yahweh because everyone, all, shall progressively perceive and thus understand and be acquainted with me from a little one even to a large one of them. Because I shall continue in the 12th verse being merciful with a cleansing covering for their injustices, behaviors contrary to the way pointed out. That's what injustice is. That's when people do injustices. They are behaving contrary to the way pointed out. Inequities and acts of lawlessness, 
And then I would by no means be reminded further of their mistakes and failures. That's why he's God. That's why he's God. Their errors and falling short of the target, their sins. 13th verse, in thus to be saying new in kind and quality, he has made the first or the former old. And that which is progressively growing old and obsolete, failing of age, aging into decay, is near, is disappearing, vanishing away. We can't put new wine in uh, old wine sacks. Amen. It'll rent. So uh, this, this is the kind of covenant that has been made with us. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Glory to God. There's nothing that you can do about it. Whether you want it or whether you don't want it, it's yours. Amen. You know, that's what reconciliation is. Reconciliation is a gift. And uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if anybody believes in it or not. It's still in effect. <laughs> God believes in it. And uh, so it doesn't matter if you believe it or if you don't. Uh, it will have its way. And uh, it, will, it, will, uh, it is irrevocable and uh, cannot be taken away. Amen. So, so there's a lot of peace for me in what we've just read. Uh, don't get into this thing of back and forth with anyone that uh, you, you, you have problems with. Uh, take my advice. Leave it alone. Let it work its work. Let God work on you. Let God work on them. And uh, don't try pointing the fingers at someone else and saying, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. You've got to come this way because this is the way I'm going. Let every man be such as they are in the Lord. If God speaks to you to minister, minister. If he doesn't, don't. Leave it alone. Let God minister. Amen. And if we'll do that, we will progressively walk into the administration of the new day of Christ. Amen. So uh, I hope you gotten uh, uh, something good out of tonight's session. This is such a joy for me to be able to bring this and such a joy to know that there are those of you out there that are being fed by it. You've, uh, you've wrote and let me know that it's blessing you and I appreciate it so much. If you want to write to Bobby Jean and I, and the house of the Lord, uh, you can write to us at P.O. Box 0519, Dixon, D-I-C-K-S-O-N, Tennessee, 37056. Amen. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, be sure to pass those on. Uh, as I've often said, you haven't been prayed for unless you've been prayed for by Bobby Jean. <laughs> Glory to God. She is a believer. And she knows the word. Amen. So do that. Pass it on. If you have prayer requests you want to put on the comments here, do that. Even uh, uh, after we get done recording and, and uh, later on, if you want to put a prayer request on the comments, do that. Uh, we'll read it and we'll pray for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you, God, that you're Word is full of eternal truth. So, Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to give us, Lord, uh, a heart and a mind that is totally focused upon you, Lord. Let us not be drawn aside from the path that you have laid out for us, Lord. Let us not give way to all the disarray and all the tumult of this world, Lord. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that our eyes will be stayed upon Jesus. I'm asking you, Lord, that your people will continue to walk in a progressive manner, growing, maturing daily, Lord, learning of you, 
that we will tend to you, Lord, in our everyday life, that we will be uh, faithful in getting alone with you, Lord, reading your word, asking you, Lord, to make us strong so that we can stand in the midst of such a, a world of violence and of uh, uh, bad character, Lord, just asking you, Lord, that you will keep us safe from, from the uh, pandemic, asking you, Lord, that your people will be hemmed in with you, that, Lord, you will surround us with a hedge of covering and safety, and that, Lord, you will uh, allow us to continue to be able to fulfill our purpose in you, Lord. That's all we want to do, Lord, is each day fulfill our purpose in you, Jesus. And, and we'll give you the praise for everything, Lord. Thank you for all your love and care for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, I'll have to again see how it's going for Friday. Uh, I, I want to uh, do the reading room again Friday. So be looking for the news feed. And if you like the House of the Lord Facebook page, you should be able to uh, get a notification if you have your notifications on uh, when uh, we do have uh, a teaching to be put on. But I will be announcing it. Uh, as I see it right now, I will be. Uh, but I don't want to promise anything. What a, what a time we're in. But you know, that's the way it ought to be. Uh, that's not uh, abnormal in God for us not to get ahead of God in anything, not to take anything for granted, amen? But we wait upon the Lord. When he speaks, we obey. If he doesn't speak, we abide and we obey in our abiding. Uh, so uh, let's wait and see about Friday night. I'll let you know. Hallelujah. Love you, and, and, and we appreciate you so much. You're our body, and you're our family in God, and we don't take you lightly. God bless.